Welcome back to D&D. &D. So, last time you had made it down to the Singularity, you had been told that you need to enter into the memories in order to communicate with it, in order to find out the cure for the sonic weapon used against you. You also took a quick detour to a bar and found some basically giant grubs that made alcohol based on what you feed it. Hell yeah. Uh, you were able to secure the limiter from one of the scientists in order to allow you to connect to the singularity without fear of merging into it permanently. Uh, you're also warned if you die in the memories, you die in real life, Matrix rules. Traveling in to the memories, you did eventually find some snippets here or there as you traversed finding Sandro as a young child building his first kind of mechanical creature. Uh, memory bleeding into his college days, bleeding in, finding them connecting with the uh, different artificers and finding that they were the apprentices for the artificer Zaff Feller. Uh, eventually making your way to a memory of the elf Salit. Uh, wait, hold on. I actually I wrote this dude's name down, and I can yet to remember. Um, hold on, Sailor. I got. I wrote down all three of their names. Why am I not remembering them? It'd be like that. Sit, you know, I should have made them all just S names so I could eat, remember it easier. It's Sandro, the gnome Misa, and the elf Silric. See, I, I'm actually smart enough to write names down. Uh, <laughs> you found his memory of him going to the World Tree uh, in order to find some information on spells. Uh, you did, however, find that some of the uh, memories proved to be more aggressive to you. So, we leave off with you being surrounded by, or, well, confronted by some of the dru uh, druid memories. So, we're going to, I'd like you all to click on your character and roll initiative. Hey, well. Oh. I remember where we were. All initiatives. There we are. Click the me, open the sheet, roll the initiative. Paint the man, cut the lines. Unrelated to D&D, &D, not to tangent, uh, Mandalore just did a video on A Machine for Pigs. That was extremely entertaining, Ian. Oh yeah, I should watch that. I, do I recommend it. I didn't find the game to be particularly exciting, but I found it to be relatively funny. He's very good at being effulsive with praise at the things it does well, and uh, very, very funny about the things it does wrong. All I remember is that the, the people who wrote the game, they just got a thesaurus, looked up the word pig, and used every other verb, like every other noun for it that they could find. Every other thing is a pig. <laughs> All right, let's see here. One, two, three, four. Are we missing somebody? Nope, that's it. All right. So let's play our standard. Play me out, Donnie. There we go. All right. Fern, you're quick on the draw. You find these kind of... Uh, they were initially just druids, but as they approach you, you can see that their bodies shift and change, and they appear as people, but definitely they seem to be more of a kind of almost projection they definitely do not match with the uh the other druids who are within this area hmm. okay i suppose i will um shoot at one of them i guess this one okay where is it is 17 and a 14 all right. First shot strikes true, dealing nine piercing damage. Uh, however, your second fire, uh, the second shot of your pistol just travels past the creature. Just seems to just avoid it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, 
Or I could, like, back up and then charge at that one. I guess I'll try that. Okay. I guess I think she has to run 20 feet. Charge. Yeah, Aurora would definitely have enough movement to back up and then charge to you. And then Maul. 17 hits for 6 slashing damage. Alright. Target takes an extra 1d6 slashing from the charge. Okay. Do that. Another 2. I'm okay. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw. So All right. Uh, what's the DC? Uh, Eleven. Okay, so it is able to. Aurora okay. kind of backs up, shoots forward, strikes this creature, and almost manages to knock it down, but is able to maintain its balance and avoid being uh, knocked prone. Okay. All right. Do you wish to do anything else? Um. That. That's it. All right. Yeah. Auto, you are up. I'm just gonna spin around like a helicopter. Um. <laughs> uh, out, Eldritch Blast. Uh. Hey, I'm thinking here. Okay. Um, what were they called? My. I will attack with my sword. Let me see where I'm gonna stand. Oh, probably right here. Yes, right there. That'll okay. be nicely. I'll attack this one. This uh. Jabroni. Okay. That'll probably miss. Yeah, you're. Uh, you take a swipe. Uh, your first attack passes without it being able to sh hit true, but the second one does sh does make contact. Hooray! Uh, let's see. Come on, damage show. Okay, for nine slashing damage. That will... That should be it. Yes. Alright. Fiffle, you're up. You get to go for any of them, so you have the benefit of your assassinate. Nice. Fighting dream druids in... The dream, you say? Yeah, sort of. Okay. That's that's these guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will attempt to assassinate this one. All right. And you get the benefit of uh, advantage. Okay, well that does hit. That's auto crit. Yep. As well as sneak attack. Gonna get out me calculator just to make sure I'm not foolish. Twelve plus thirteen. Okay. And uh, I'll sort of stay approximately where I am and use this what looks to be rock formation as cover. Bonus action hide. Roger that. Alrighty. Graham, you're up. Alright, we got three dudes in close proximity. That ain't bad for me. Uh, I'm gonna whip up old reliable here. Do you have like three of those? You're, you're not wrong. Um... Let's do a cast of Spirit Guardians. Okay. That's 15 feet. Yep. And Graham is going to move 5, 10, and that'll get everybody in it. 
And do I want to... Let's see, I think it's an action to cast it. I'm going to fix that. I don't know why it keeps not having the action time in it. Okay. Um, do I have any bonus action cantrips? I don't know that I do. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to stay put where I am because that was my action. Um, obviously, friendlies are not affected by it. Yep. And it'll be an aquatic. Go ahead. All right. So that is a wisdom save. So we're going to start left to right. All right. Fails. Second one will make their wisdom save. Fail. And then the third one uh, was a success. Okay. So he'll take half okay. so... of 12. And the others will take the full 12. It's necrotic, and if they resist necrotic, no, they don't. Roger that. Let's see. So, okay. And uh, difficult terrain, as usual. And the last one is only taking six. Mm-hmm. All right. On to the mine guards themselves, and I believe, yeah, so it starts when they uh, first do it, so they have to make it again, correct, because it's the start of their turn? I believe so. Let me see. Let me look at the wording again. Um, okay. When you cast... The creature enters the area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, yes. Okay. So we're going to have them go again. So left to right again. Fail. Pass. Pass. And fail. Fail. Okay. So 14, and one of them takes 7. Okay, so... That's 14. Just microwaving the memories. That was a pass, so that's only 7. All right. So they're going to start. So we have one is. Let's see here. Yeah. So we're going to have the one close to Aurora and Otto. It is going to make a strike against Otto to the best of its ability, failing. It is then going to make another attack against Otto. 22 hits. I believe so. Let me uh, just double check. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's going to deal 10 force damage, and can you give me a DC uh, yeah, strength save? Yes. 25 with my aura. Well, that's perfectly fine. So it <laughs> generates a kind of psionic blast and strikes you, and it hits but you can feel it attempt to shove you back but you're able to hold and brace and avoid being knocked back it's going to then do the second time against it's the next one uh well i believe a 22 hits uh aurora yep i'm assuming so yes aurora is doing like a great gray wolf thief but with a shield instead of a sword <laughs> It is so Aurora's gonna take twelve force damage and can she also give me a strike save? Okay. Twelve. Right? Her DC wait, her proficiency goes into that too, right? Yeah, plus three. Okay, so she does have enough to pass. So yeah. Aurora and then is I will close. Yep, and I will obviously uh send them. Yep. That does hit. Go ahead, roll damage. And I think that also, I believe that also makes their movement speed zero. Or is that opportunity to see here? Yep, for the rest of the turn. Okay. Very nice. This Lost one's going to move out of the range, and it is going to take a look at you. Yeah. Okay. So it is going to look at you, Graham. This creature is intelligent and is going to fire. Yeah. Does a 17 hit? It does not. It's going to fire again. Failing. Nope. Uh, the next creature is going to the remaining one. It's going to uh, fire at Graham. Does a 23 hit? Yes, it does. Let me 
check something real quick. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Gonna suffer nine psychic damage. Can you give yeah. me a concentration save, please? Okay, and concentration is a constitution save? Yes, it is. All right, so add five to that? Yep. So 11. Uh, yep, that's enough, because I believe it is just... The, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I and also need to do a wisdom saving throw or be stunned, right? Yep. Uh, I'm good. All right. It is going to fire... No, I'm sorry, it fired twice. No, wait. No, I think it only fired once. Yep, you're right. That one. It's going to fire one more time at you. Twice. That one will also hit. Okay, make one more concentration save, please. Okay, and do I need to make the wisdom save every time, or if you pass once, are you good? Uh, you would have to make it uh, every time, yeah. Okay. Well, you pass that, and you pass that. I'm good. And uh, 10 psychic damage? Uh, yeah, so right. a total of um, 19 psychic damage. Yep. I am at 54 HP. Okay. Good couple of wax. Fern, you're up. Okay. Um, I will attempt to shoot at this one again. Uh, well, that first one definitely hits. Uh, second <laughs> one does not, however, but that's all right, because you're doing a total of 22 damage. Nice shot. Nice. All right. Um, and then Aurora will maul her, or try. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Aurora goes to bite, and the creature, this uh, projection sort of just isn't there when Aurora snaps at her. Or Dang. snaps at it, I should say. Did you assume it's gender? Well, technically, they are presenting... Uh, this one is presenting as a female druid, but is also simultaneously not, as it kind of <laughs> shifts between the two forms. All right, and that's it for me. And we are on to auto. Uh, I will... Hit the same one again. Okay. See what we got here. Why don't you clicky click? Oh Jesus! Stop it! Mm -hmm. Right, boom. Not gonna. Okay, and that does hit. Go ahead, roll damage. And in. Okay. That ain't hitting. Yep. The first one strikes well, but it's able to just not be there when you attack again. Yep, and then that should be it. Fiffle, you're up. Well, let's... Also, just random because of, I saw Ian play Slay the Spire the other day. It's like, imagine multiplayer Slay the Spire in the oh same team. God. Isn't that across the obelisk? Is it? I've never heard of it. I believe so. They also have something that's uh, Battle Bands. Where you're, that's a that's a multiplayer kind of card battle game. I'm gonna kind of peek out this way, so I can shoot this person. Okay. And I would have advantage due to being hidden. I think, right? I believe so. Due to having have been having have been hidden, um, so I will shoot. Uh, f okay, nope, that does hit. Oh, nice. and then I will get a damage and a sneak attack. With that fiffle, you are able to just deal enough damage, and this projection just kind of shimmers and fades away. Aha! I will uh, move back to my hiding spot with my and bonus action. Okay. Graham, you're up. Alright. I am gonna... Uh, let's see. They're already in the area, so I don't think the microwave will kick in until their turn. Uh, however... Um, I'm going to move up here to keep that one back in. Actually, that would put her back in, or that one back in. So, one save, if you will. Okay, doesn't make it. Takes 
Six. Okay. Uh, uh, I am then going to melee attack uh, the one adjacent to me. Okay. So as my sheet lets me open it up. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to 29 to hit. Well, that does certainly hit. Holy guacamole. And that will be 13 radiant. I assume this thing isn't undead, so it won't take the extra two. And it will take an extra three necrotic. Okay, so that's uh, 13 slashing. Let's see, so that's... Um, it is magical slashing, yeah. Okay, so 13 slashing, magic. Two radiant and three necrotic? Oh, wait, no. my uh, I think all damage the Sunblade does is radiant. Okay, so... My bad. Um, oh, yeah, okay, so it's 13 radiant plus three necrotic. Three necrotic, yeah. Okay. But that's from being a cleric of death. And then it would take an additional two if it wasn't dead. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And... Uh... I am going to chill there, and on the start of both their turns, they'll need to make another save versus seven or three damage. Okay, so we'll go to there. So we'll start with the first one. Fails. <laughs> Fails. So they're both taking seven. Cool. The first one really wanted to take damage. Kill me. All right. Well, the first one next to you, Graham, is going to make an attack against you. Shocking. Does not hit. Is going to then make another attack against you. Does not hit. And then the third attack, attempting to break your concentration. Failing again. And I will obviously send all that. Yep. No. Thanks. Roll below 10 each time. All right. Well, that does hit. <laughs> Okay. Second one is going to move in, and same business. It's going to attempt to strike you. Okay. Failing. Nineteen hit. Uh, that does hit. Okay. For thirteen force damage, so you just need to make a constant uh, concentration save. Uh, this will be at plus five. I'm yep. good, and then a strength save, right? Yes, please. Uh, also good. And 13 then. That ain't nothing to sneeze at, though. And then a 22, which will hit as well. For an additional 14 Jesus. force. You don't make Man, they've already halved me. It's fucking crazy. Uh, yeah. I'm at 27 out of 75. I was at full HP at the start of this. Okay, uh, uh, so yeah, it's a... To those two saves, uh, please. 16, so... Passes. Or 10, yep. and strength. Uh, I'm okay. Good. Now it's on to Fern, the Fern turn. The Fern burn. You've been able to maintain concentration really well, though. Yeah. Small favors. They are beating me like I owe them money, though. Paladin is being helpful for once. <laughs> oh, it's a, it is an extremely helpful class. Like, and it always has been. <laughs> All right, I will... Me and my thoughts. The healing spirit. Okay. I'll just place it on uh, Graham. He looks like he needs some help. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you see a... I didn't even see that bad. They just fucking wail on me. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, a uh, medium-sized aurora appears upon Work. you. <laughs> and it's what, 1d6 right off the rip? I think so, yeah. Okay. Let's just read it. I can roll it or you can roll it. Okay. Here you go. Oh, no. Only a two. Yeah, it's better than nothing. <laughs> All right. My journey um, of healing begins. And then I will attempt to shoot this this one again. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, that misses. But the second one does strike true. Yeah. As you're able to see, like the uh, the first time, it just flickers out of existence, and but the second time, the bullet strikes, and you can see it sort of stop projecting for a second, and then restore its uh, its form. Okay. Um, or is just gonna move over here, and um, she'll just take the dodge action. Okay. I use my bonus for healing spirit. All right, Aurora, you see her just back up and begin to, like, I don't know, wiggle butt? 
I guess. <laughs> On to auto. Uh, let's see, auto. Uh, this woman right here, or this thing, this apparition, this anti Graham hater, <laughs> Graham haters club. It's a big club. Maybe, maybe not. I don't uh, know. That does hit. Go ahead, roll damage. This is for Graham, you, you, you Graham beating hussy. <laughs> and we'll hit her again. Okay, the first one strikes, but the second one misses as it just flickers. Okay, and I will put myself right here. All right. And that shall be it for Mr. Otto of the tavern, the screaming halfling. And speaking <laughs> of said halfling... Hammer time. It is the fiffle. Oh. Jeremy? Yes. Oh, sorry. I'll shoot this one. Okay. Bring them great pain. He's more shootable. That does strike. Go ahead and roll the damage. Okay. Two. Take All that. right. With that, the arrow just sinks into the projection, and it immediately just flickers permanently out of existence. Hooray! Uh, Don't um... exist anymore. Bonus action. <laughs> All right. What a try. And then we refer. Uh, we go back to the gram. All right. Uh... Let's see, he's already in the microwave, so no instant microwaving. Mm -hmm. uh, I am gonna bonk him. Already died. Roll to bonk. What a horny jail. 17 that for, does hit for 12, 12 radiance and 6 necrotic. Okay, total of 18. And. Uh, you know what, turn. And on his turn. Yeah, that will do a. Wow. Nine. Fail, so it's just, yep, full nine damage. Oh, well, you got a d6, too, if you like. Oh, nice. Um, nice! <laughs> that spell is so good. All right. It is going to strike against uh, Graham. 22 that hits. Hit. Okay. Nine. And can you give me an intelligence save and a const uh, concentration save? Concentration, I'm good. Yep. And... Intelligence save, okay. Uh, 7 plus 5, 12? No. So I'm confused. Alrighty, but so let me go look up. Yes, yeah, so we'll keep that in mind. Oh boy. And then, um, Otto, you're able to, of course, do your yep. Sentinel, if you desire. Yes. I mean, nobody else is going to get slapped in the face. That's for Graham, you Graham beater. Okay. For 12. I'm currently reminded of XCOM, like the original one, where aliens would always go for the guy with the weakest willpower, so you just always brought the psychic sad boy to take, <laughs> absorb all the abuse. <laughs> you just give him weapons that couldn't break through your own armor, so you could like, okay, he's shooting us in the back with a pistol, but it doesn't matter. A classic. Poor Graham. All right. It's then going to turn to you, Otto, and it's going to make a telekinetic thrust. 18 hit? No. Or, okay, and the second one? That does yeah. hit. Uh, for 13 force, okay. and can you give me a strength save, please? Give me a sign, Lord. You are fine. Mm -hmm. Not that sign. Alright. Uh, well, that's the creature's turn. On to Fern. Alright. Um, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to shoot at it. A classic. You know what we're here for. <laughs> uh, well, the first one does hit. Go ahead and roll Dan. Uh, oh, you already did seven. Yep. Yeah, it comes out automatically. I don't know why, but uh, it's convenient. You don't have to like worry about rolling. Uh, do I heal another six yet? Uh, no, no. Now it's on the beginning of your turn. Okay. Okay. Um. um let's see, Aurora. Would she be able to? Hmm. Trying to see if she would have enough room to charge. She needs 20 feet. Yeah, I think she, if she goes like around this way, 
She'll charge. All right. And let's do the mall. Hits. All right. So she does that. Plus a what is it? A one d six. Yep. So one d six. Likes the twos today. <laughs> and then uh, the creature will have to make it strength, strength saving throw. If I believe it fails, correct? Yes. So yep. it's knocked prone and takes an extra. Three? Three damage? It says an extra three. Or it That might be like the average. If you don't oh, I see. Yep. Oh, okay. So it's already taken that. Six? Yep, it's already taken that extra damage, I believe. Well, that's. No. Because it's. It takes it automatically if it hits them. If it gets hit by the mall. Uh... Target takes an extra 1d6. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw against your spell save DC or be knocked prone. Yeah, so it got the two from the D six, um, and then, it, and then it takes an extra. And if the target is okay, oh, is it in there twice? <laughs> the target takes an extra one D six slashing damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a strength saving throw against your spell save DC. Re knock prone. Yeah, it's okay. in there a second it's in there time. Twice. Okay, but that's no. weird. Okay, so it takes. Okay, she's just. It's just not prone. Okay. All right, uh, and then on to Otto. Hey. Uh, I hit her twice. Okay. Grand beater, there she is. That misses. That is a miss, and that is also a miss. And found it. Sorry, Graham. You're going to get beaten more. You just kind of... I'm confused. <laughs> if she's prone, do the melee attacks. That is true. So she is prone, so you go... Advantage, yes. Give me another two to... Uh, We'll just say it missed the first time. That okay? That does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. Nice. And that be that be that. Okay. The, Good job, Roar. I think that's the first time that's worked. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened in a dream. <laughs> Source this hat was brought to me in a dream. All of a sudden, here comes Lucian from the top rope, set a fireball into the middle of everybody. <laughs> Yeah, max level fireball. Uh, no need to thank me, guys. We're all dead. Fiffle, you are up. Uh, the creature is prone, but you have hiding, so it's going to bounce out to a flat, regular attack. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'll kind of uh, emerge and kind of line up a shot through everybody. Mostly, why Shoot, are you like shooting, shooting over Aurora's head? <laughs> Collateral damage. <laughs> For us, it's mostly, uh, why are you like this, Lucian? The age of six, I was born without a face. Okay, that hits. Roll damage. Okay. And Fiffle, awesome. that is enough yeah. to kill this Fiffle creature. Was always enough. Yeah, you're dead now, you non-existent dream, ghost, whatever you are. Um, Graham will heal and be confused for his turn. Yep. Uh, so, Graham, you'll absorb the um, 1d6 of health. Oh, okay. Thank you. 29. And, and then, then Graham? The, the d100 roll? Uh, yeah, Graham. Uh... Do I roll it or have you already rolled it? I have rolled it. It was a 7. I believe. Actually, I don't know. No, actually, an affected uh, can't take reactions and must roll a d10 at the start. Okay, so actually, no, I'm sorry. Can you roll the d10, please? Yes, just one d10? Yep. Nine. You're fine. You're able Hooray. to just avoid... No, I saw, uh, if it was a seven, you'd actually have to be forced to make a melee attack against one of your friends. <laughs> just Aurora looks up all like, I did good, just <laughs> boom. <laughs> Uh, Graham will stay there in the healing thing until it dissipates, because ow. Okay. There's two more, so... Nice. Okay. There you go. Well, it puts yeah. me back over half. Nice. I'm at 38 out of 75. <laughs> Ugh. I need to get some better armor, son. With the projections destroyed, uh, the memory continues on as if nothing had happened. Nice. You see Silrek kind of looking at some runic stones that have been placed around the 
the base of the world tree. And he takes out some paper and he's sketching. And make an arcana check, please. I'm not good at those. Unless somebody can help me. I got a plus five. Uh, I can't. I don't think I can assist you, yeah, but. This, yeah, this would not be an assist. This would be more like a reaction as you're like looking at this. <laughs> nope. However, uh, you're able to tell that he is sketching some um, runes that were like placed here onto the paper. Uh, and as he's going and finishing auto, I, can you make a uh, con yeah, constitution save, please? Uh, someday. Nice. 29. Yep, you are fine. Oh, and actually, Graham, can you also make a constitution save? Okay. Uh, you are fine as well. 23. Yeah, you, you both feel an odd lightheadedness uh, go through you as you look at this paper, but you're able to avoid uh, any terrible side effects from it. Hmm. Well, that's always good. And Otto, you're able to determine that on this paper is being written down some uh, magical formulas that you believe are related to uh, enhancing a sound so that the it would be like a very low sound that would just be constant um, and eventually like causing the frequency to kind of like increase like ever so slightly for a very very long period of time yeah i'm gonna share that when i get a chance with the the guy the team and, and do i get a sense that this is also what this sonic weapon was based off of you believe that this magical formula is related to a like a sound that would last for a very long time uh, probably two weeks to maybe a month. Okay. While so building upon an itself. Earlier form of it. Yep. I will uh, share this with the team, the party of ass kickers. Well, we're on the money. We could probably try to look for or think of getting put in memories pertaining to this tree or this place because those will be tied up with his research on um, sound stuff. Maybe his development of these uh, earlier, this, these primitive uh, steps too. He yeah. maybe enhanced it better. That's what I'm thinking. Like this is the start of his, his research era. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yep. All right. So you, how how do you go about doing this? Uh, can we push into a memory where he he made it stronger yet? Actually, like where he made it more potent, where uh, he himself or maybe like colleagues are starting to worry about what if we accidentally use this on ourselves? Is it, do we have a fallback on how to cure ourselves? Okay. If you would like Redu to, you know, like, yeah, like redundancies to keep ourselves safe. Okay. Uh, if you would like to search through memories of that nature, please go ahead and do just a flat wisdom check, not a wisdom save. The wisdom I can't read. Quick wisdom. We all do it, or just everybody can do it. Yeah, this right. would be an attempt to like kind of cycle the through memory. the memory sphere. What? Okay. Uh, let's see, if it's not a save, I would take off proficiency bonus, so it would be three less, 23. Okay. Otto and Fern are not having any luck, like, cycling through. They are attempting to reach out their minds and connect to this kind of, like, web and ocean of memories. Uh, Graham, you're able to latch on to a later memory that Silric had been doing, working on a more advanced version of this memory. Like, okay. of, of this, uh, mis this, it's a memory of the magical spell he's working on. Seatbelts, everyone. And you are able to kind of alter this memory, and you can see that it bleeds into an 
that memory you're looking for. And so you can see that twisted among the roots of this giant tree uh, is a part of a looks like either a laboratory or a classroom. Uh, there's definitely a lot of diagrams up pinned on the wall, uh, stuff being worked on at a draft table, a uh, number of different alchemical components spread around, just sheets and sheets of paper, and Silric kind of just bags under the eyes, just working late. Obviously, he has not had an ability to like go into a uh, trance and actually do you know what elves do when they what, what like where a human would sleep yep, yep. i don't need sleep i need answers <laughs> and he's just scribbling it out of the table so currently you are within the actual like grass and moss and among the trees of nature but if you were to step forward you could believe you could enter into this memory all right, uh, Graham will sally forth. Okay. And, of course, everybody sees this as well. as It is, merely needs Graham to force it open. Graham holds the door. All right. It's mine. Oh, word. We'll, we'll go. We'll follow. You enter in, and you can find, yep, the more advanced version of this spell he has been working on and once again anybody looking at it gives me an arcana please uh what are we looking at the a more advanced version of the sonic spell notes okay i i, I can look away for a second not bad not bad funny enough this time it's Otto is not able to get like his head around it. This goes into like his uh, advanced uh, spell theory that Otto has never really studied before. Uh, Graham, you at least had come across certain uh, areas of this that give you a better idea. And this spell is more designed to be kind of like stored within magical equipment that can be then possibly placed it obviously has some schematics written around funny enough in a different hand uh than what silric writes with uh indicating a kind of casing that this would rest into and could activate uh at different frequencies given some sort of external trigger okay. and a little bell but bigger <laughs> actually very close uh it does have a significant overlap between uh toll of uh doom was it um toll the dead toll the dead it has a very uh very significant uh overlap between toll the dead and what's being written obviously seems to be a larger version of it although it doesn't have any um, necrotic uh writings within it it seems to be based on thunder you believe okay that makes sense it is sonic and once again uh can Auto and Graham give me a constitution save. Nice. Okay. 27. Uh, Jesus. Can I get halfing luck? Yeah. Oh my. Wow. Okay. Auto, um uh. you looking at this double over and you immediately vomit. Ooh. And you just unload, and it's kind of crazy because, you know, you're not sure what you ate in a dream. And you are also going to take... You're barfing up trauma. Three thunder damage, as you can feel this kind of, like, stress within your skull. And you're just not able to, like, it's just kind of like this... It's like your ears pop, but times a hundred ouch that sounds horrible and auto can you give me another constitution save please nice. eventually you're able to get your like you're able to kind of pull yourself together and you're able to like the uh, the sound just dissipates you can still feel your ears kind of having popped but you're no longer being affected by this at this time of course Graham will offer his flask of whiskey and his water canteen 
to de vomit the mouse. Yes, I will. I will take this. Drinking it, I've, uh, it doesn't really taste like whiskey. It tastes more like soup. Whatever, I've been devomited. <laughs> whiskey soup. Specifically, a kind of uh, vegetable soup with like a beef broth. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. Put it's hearty. Put that on the uh, menu at the Screaming Halfling. <laughs> Psychic <laughs> soup. Mind whiskey stew. I will be right back again. And you hear within your head a um, a voice uh, that is you recognize this voice as belonging to. Well, I write these people's names, and yeah, I can never remember who it is. It's Jerna. You hear the voice of Jerna, uh, as if from a distance, uh, like being yelled at you from across, like a like a vast valley. And it's like, is everything all right? Um, can I communicate telepathically in this state or not? Make a make another wisdom check. Just auto or everybody. Uh, everybody had heard this, so if they like, they can attempt it as well. Uh, wisdom check, so take three off this. Okay. 18. Yeah. You're able to establish a connection, and you can kind of, like, think a hard thought and communicate with Jurna. Prototype sonic weapon. Ow. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you hear the kind of distant voice of Jurna again. You threw up, and then your ears started bleeding. Prototype sonic weapon. Really ouch. I'm, you're just mentally sending the thumbs up crying cat. <laughs> I think I understand. Keep looking if you can. <laughs> yep. That's... That's an auto sense. Yep. <laughs> uh, Graham is gonna try to guide this to like him giving a lecture or something about the sonic principles behind the weapon. And possibly maybe uh, remedies against it if like inadvertent contamination. Mm -hmm. That they've developed. Okay. All right. Uh, if you would like to give me another wisdom check to try and sort for that memory. Uh, 21. Okay. The cat. <laughs> yeah, Otto with the more residual effects uh, is having a tougher time sorting through the memories. Graham, however, is becoming more uh, adept at kind of like traveling through this ocean of memories. Nice. What a bro. <laughs> and he eventually winds up at a memory of Sulric, Misa, and a strange gaunt skeletal figure uh, wearing which Sandro's clothing. Nice. Uh, obviously having been treated with a number of uh, chemicals that would preserve the body as well as magical effects to allow it to present and not, you know, rot away. The lichdom li form of Sandro. Yeah, I was going to say the beginning forms of lichdom. It is a newly, uh, at least based on your knowledge of lichdom, it is a very, very recently ascended into lichdom person. Graham studies this for later examination. Graham, give me a religion check on that one, please. I will... Uh, base or advantage or anything? Uh, I'd give you advantage, yeah. The memory is strong from that 24. 23. Okay. Graham, looking over the end results of ascending to Lichdom, you have uh, a better idea of what it is. Um, you know, when you can, it's, it's basically, you know, solve for this 
solve for x, but you can see the end result. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a better idea. You suspect that if you were to do some more investigation into the actual uh, requirements for lichdom, seeing it so clearly in person, or well, person, would give you a better idea of how to achieve it for yourself or possibly others. Cool. Graham will remember this. Graham will soon become a lich. lich Probably Graham. not soon, <laughs> but it's not off the table. The this avatar of idols. For you guys. The avatar of idols is born here. I'd be down. But yes, it's uh, it is Silric. You see the kind of short uh, gnome version of Misa, the lich Sandro, as well as an kind of older uh, half elf. Uh, you've not really seen him in these memories before, as well as a kind of tall, sharp-faced elf man. Uh, you can see he has the kind of longer ears. Oddly, they're a lot longer than even Silric's, but uh, they are all kind of listening to Silric as he gives a presentation, uh, breaking down the uh, spell he has developed and that it could be cast his lecture uh, among them goes into exactly that casting the spell would probably be wanted done at a like distance the wizard that cast it uh, would not be protected from it and would either need a way to cure the effects or a way to have the spell cast with nobody around okay and that's where he points to Silric and like or, uh, where Silver points to Sandro, like and that's where my colleague, the artist for Sandro, comes in with a device he is developing that will be able to use this. Uh, we believe that if we can give a proper presentation to Zaf Feller, we may be able to get additional funding on the actual research needed to start producing something like this. However, he is currently on the bottom of the lab doing research on his... Uh, well, don't say it in front of him, the Chaos Blade. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, prefers to, you know, go by the official name for it. Uh, <laughs> but at which point they, you begin to hear an alarm. It's like, huh. Oh. Uh, it's just a single, just a single alarm, everyone. Don't worry. That was merely a test of our lab security system. Mm, I don't know about that. Anyway, uh, anybody wish to give some additional input? Uh, Misa is, of course, going to be combining my spell with the actual Artisifer's equipment, uh, merging the two together. Um, uh, are we in a uh, like a lecture hall environment or like somebody's staff office or department office or something? This looks like a staff office. It actually, the room looks very similar to some you've been into previously uh, in this actual lair itself. Okay. Um, Graham is going to speak up and say, uh, what about countermeasures once the thing's actually affected someone? Countermeasures. That's something we're currently developing. Uh, we are in the process. This device is simply a prototype. It is exists merely as ink on paper currently. Uh, we are definitely going to be producing some smaller versions of it uh, that would affect animals, and that from there we can go and produce a slightly larger version uh, once we are able to then produce the countermeasures. Uh, scaling it up is something we are running into minor issues on, however. Oh yeah? How so? Um, past a certain size and fitting the spell in, it's it's not merely a case of just putting it into a larger container and then activating it. It is a case that the spell kind of collapses in on itself. Um, when I've been writing out all the formula, I cannot produce a spell that is capable of actually creating the large enough sound. So countermeasures are 
not quite on the list. We want to scale it up, got to get a bigger version of it first without it actually exploding in our face. Because currently, all my magical theorem does not show that that is going to go up. Currently. Oh, how does it collapse in on itself? Do you think that might be a vulnerability even if you can scale it up? I, if we can scale it up, then it will not collapse on itself. But that's why I want to build some small versions. I want to see this in an actual environment. I want to try testing this on rabbits or something of that nature and see if it would actually be able to then produce something larger. I think with real world data, we'd be able to then scale up the formula. But as it is, my theoretical formulaics are just not able to produce what we need. Let's see. Um, you, you think uh, old feller will uh, sign off on funding some animal studies? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, first, we would probably want to build a prototype. Uh, that we can demonstrate to him. Makes uh, sense. And then hopefully he will then give us the funding needed uh, to redirecting it from current projects to this new one. I know he is interested in mass producing the far casting unit that would act allow teleportation, which is a little bit more important to the Emperor currently. But a weapon of this nature, a uh, sonic weapon that we could deploy to people it could be used for crowd control, stopping riots, uh, protection against larger creatures, all sorts of different things. So it does have merit. You know, my concern is uh, it'd be pretty great at stopping a riot, but ideally you don't want everybody involved in the riot to drop dead with no re uh, recourse. Nah, like especially with a sonic weapon, anybody who hears it like that could have a lot of civilian contamination. That's true, and that is one thing we are determining. Uh, the perfect version of this would, of course, be able to be activated immediately by uh, a remote device. It would then be able to instantly cause the rioters to be knocked unconscious and would not cause further harm to them. Uh, the current device is unfortunately theoretically going to kill over the course of about a few days to a week for smaller creatures theoretically of course uh but it's all it's all under development it's just a matter of actually getting from paper to the actual nitty-gritty i uh, see uh what sort of resources are you looking into maybe uh maybe a couple of the other branches and faculty would be able to help you do some fact finding We've had some interesting uh, investigations, I could say, uh, with some of our other faculty members. Uh, the ones on this level, of course, have been very helpful. Uh, the other levels have been less than helpful, although we would love to uh, appreciate uh, Keegan here, and he points to the kind of older half-elf man, uh, our resident expert on fiendish investigations has been willing to listen to us and provide some additional resources. Um, of course, our visiting um, magical specialist, Krexon, has also been happy to provide some additional input. Hmm. What's the uh, the fiend angle, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Keegan, would you be so kind as to uh, lighten them? Half-elf kind of stands up. <clears throat> A uh, fiendish study is revealing that possibly a fiendish creature could be used, uh, bound into the actual device itself to possibly regulate the the actual spell itself once it's ignited, the or possibly even amplified. Uh, the issue is merely summoning and binding the fiendish entities from below on the very last level that we have access to. Uh, unfortunately, this at this time, I cannot say because merging fiendish magic with what is currently being presented is not going to work. We're going to need a basically a working device that I can bind a demon to for testing purposes. 
Gotcha. Um, Graham will try to think of the... Have we seen the bell thing, or did we just hear it? Uh, I don't you know if we've seen the weapon yet. heard it. However, you've seen schematics of it. Uh, Graham will try to think of the assembled version of what he sees in the schematics. Okay. Give me a wisdom check. Uh, minus three, 17. Okay. As you attempt to find that memory, you are experiencing it almost through a kind of thick bit of water like you're you're seeing like a flash of it but you're not able to pass through into it you can only hear a few snippets of the weapon must be used let's begin deploying it but you are pushing back and make a Make an insight check. I will try an insight check. Can we do this? Dang it. Are we seeing this? You'd all be able to do it. You're all seeing this as you are kind of like merging together to pool your resources. Oh, uh, that's <laughs> So. Oh. Hang on. Well, uh, Fern got a, got a 17. Oh. <laughs> what the? Jeez. You know what? It, it, I'm paying for those crits in that combat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Justice is balanced, etc. Fern, you get the idea that you're not able to pass through this, that they are purposely, the memory is being blocked. Not too specifically, but in general, as if it is being shoved down and the three people who formed into the singularity are preventing it from being seen probably due to some trauma that they have experienced you what just... if does she share this with us yes what if we all try to like push into it together or maybe we can um try to find the root of that trauma that too which i'm guessing involves them test firing the thing Part of me thinks that they joined the singularity because they didn't finish the cure before contaminating themselves. Mm, that would be spooky. Um, yeah, wisdom that, Mr. DM? If you'd like to, you can roll a wisdom check to attempt to find some... The moment of trauma. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to try to find the incident. Uh, 12. Okay. I'm getting worse. 15. You are bleeding from the ears. It's fine. <laughs> Fern, with your kind of analysis of the uh, the traumatic response to it, you're able to kind of like search through for looking through traumatic memories. And you are able to find a second memory, like a different memory. And this one is a little bit earlier uh, than the one you're looking for, but it's definitely later than the one you were just in. And you can see a, you can see the three of them uh, kind of like scrambling. You hear a, a strange alarm going off. And you can see a bunch of researchers panicking, kind of stuffing papers and research materials in the bags. You see a number of guards attempting to get people out. And eventually you can just see a door, a thick metal door, kind of slam shut. And the just kind of like locks. And you see then like the... The, the, the evacuation is still going on. Why are they sealing the doors? Oh dear. Containment mm. breach. Is it time? Are we fleeing Viderheim? Where, where are we going to be going? That feller is still downstairs. Hmm. Crexon. 
this is your fault, and you can see him pointing to the kind of tall elf man. He's like, hmm. Perhaps. But I'll be making my way down. I'll have to speak with Zaffala myself. Besides, I don't remember hearing any pushback when I gave my initial help with your research. Hmm. Can I insight the guy to see if maybe he wanted this to happen? Go ahead and give me an insight roll. Pain. Okay. Oh, my ears stopped bleeding. Yeah, mm -hmm. you uh, you get a really good idea that this elf who is speaking is quite pleased with the results. He's calm. He is not panicked like the rest of them. Uh, he seems confident in what he is doing. All right, uh, let's try to follow the memories of that guy as he goes to see Zaffeller Feller, or try to. Okay, give me a wisdom check to try and follow this. All right, I'm going to uncheck the wisdom save and then recheck it okay. so I don't have to do math. 15. Okay. You are not able to find any memories. It seems that when Krex on uh, here went to speak with Zaffeller, Feller, none of the singularities, none of the three members had actually followed him. Uh, I'm going to try to think of another future memory with this guy, maybe where they confront him over what he did. Okay, go ahead. Young man, there's no need to. Damn it! <laughs> uh, nope. All right, bleeding auto coming in. Blotto. Blotto. I like that, actually. I'll save that for another character. Fern, you are not able to find any memories past this you see Krexon go to the end of the level and begin to send downwards and that is the last they have ever saw of him hmm. interesting do we, do we know if zap is in here brother uh zap feller their memories seem to indicate that he is down below on the last level uh let's try thinking of him if they ever saw him again you yeah you don't believe they did. You believe that where this is the last time they saw either of the two. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's try to focus on the memories of what that dude's contributions to the system were, and then talking about it. Okay. If that tracks. Go ahead and give me another wisdom check as you attempt to follow that memory. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. I'm Mr. 15. When you want to have the plot, but the dice say no. <laughs> the memories seem to do take you... You go back a bit, and you can see that there is another memory that you are being blocked from entering um, that you suspect to be relatively important, and you kind of are forced over that memory back to an even earlier one. Back to Krexon speaking. You can see Zaf Feller. You can see the th three of the uh, the people. What uh, who's blocking this memory? Is it the three again? It does appear to be related to some traumatic event that they do not want to relive. I think they're like suppressing it, not like trying to keep us out, trying to keep it themselves from re remembering it. Is there a way to push into it? You could attempt to if you'd like. You are currently sitting in a different memory from it. Um, let's check this memory first, because I think if we actively try to push in, this, the mind minds will like fight back. Yeah, might have to do it, but still. As you enter into this memory, you can see Krexon giving a quick overview, uh, his presentation, <clears throat> a most fascinating piece, really. So taking Silric's rather mundane spell, I was able to amplify it a little bit. Silric, please take a look and see what this does. Silric stands up, he looks. Ah. Uh, the arcanic formula is appears to be related to scaling up my version. 
I've. <laughs> I must say the uh, the uh, magical uh, runic interactions are a little beyond me. Uh, I've never seen such an advanced formula before. Hmm. It, you don't have to understand it. You merely need to be able to cast it and have Misa attach it to an arcanic device if you think you're capable of. Great. And if not, then I recommend you hit the books again. Wow. What a dick. So, uh, actually, Graham is going to try a bluff, which I don't know if I should be trying because I'm not charismatic, but whatever. Um, Graham, as if he's been there for the conversation and the project, is going to say, you know, the mark of a good teacher isn't knowing it. It's being able to explain it. If you can't explain it, maybe you don't understand it well enough yourself. Let's try to goad him into explaining it. Um... Give yeah. me, uh, yeah, give me a persuasion roll. I will try. It's only a plus one. Eh, better than nothing. I've explained this before. Mr. Solrick here simply lacks the proper magical foundations to make sense of this all. However, I do have something that might be able to help. I've had to consult with a colleague of mine to actually render this formula. If you would be interested, I could perhaps introduce you and we could get a further understanding. I do need to check with him for a few additional resources. I think that's a great idea. Kind of look at the, the guys who were really there. Like, come on, let's go. Very well. I will prepare the journey for us. It's both nearer and farther than you can imagine. <laughs> oh boy, I bet I know where this is going. I have a guess. Either way, if you, I would say, take some time, prepare for the journey, because, well, nothing good is ever easy. Would this happen to involve a trip to the astral plane? No. Yeah. There goes my guess. Out of character. I thought he was going to be like partnering with the Shaper. <laughs> no, we will not be going into the astral plane. That would be a little too prosaic. So, I would say. You three gather your things. Keegan is, unfortunately, I don't think strong enough for this one. And frankly, I find his fiendish investigations to be a little too base, is a nice way to describe it. I believe that's the polite term. Eve, does, uh, does Graham get the feeling this is just kind of a dislike for the guy to begin with? That he's letting his academic arrogance take over? Uh, give me an insight check. I will try. Nice. This guy kind of just bleeds immediate condescend, uh, consensu uh, condensation. Condescension? Yeah, for everyone. Um, Ian, it's condescending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, this, 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 this man is definitely very arrogant. Um... And his, you get the feeling he dislikes everyone that he is speaking to. He has mildly more um, respect for the three here, but yeah, it, it, this is goes beyond just academically disliking the guy. This is like, I am of a much higher level than you, and I shouldn't even be attempting to lower myself to speak with you. Ah, gotcha. And the name Crexon, you've heard it before. Thought so. Does Graham remember where he heard Crexon? Give me an intelligence check, if you would. Thirteen. I can try, also. Yeah. I mean, Otto, how could you forget when the, uh, the crossblades were formed, when the initial members killed Crexon? Ah, uh, yes. Nice. 
You're you're seeing Oop. almost the uh, the mage himself responsible for your uh, your guild right here in the uh, flesh, so to speak. Hmm. Ram is gonna assuming Otto shares that slash we all remember. I will. Um, Graham is going to try to add that memory to the collective unconscious to try to get them to relax about showing the, the repressed memories that we can't get into and just give them the history lesson of Krexon getting his finally after all the shitty pulls. Okay. To do that, give me a wisdom check as you attempt to connect with the singularity. Okay. And Graham is going to remember all the history tomes and stuff that he was going through when he was making that list of all the crossblades who ever died for the Candle Shrine project. Yeah. We give, right at... Yep. And give... Okay, with that 18, that's good. Give me a history uh, history check advantage. Oh. 18. You're 18. able to merge and connect to the singularity, and you can feel yourself uh, getting pulled in and you can feel your mind merging with them and it's a flood of just chaotic thought all put together and you can feel different emotions at the exact same time you can feel the different memories all kind of flooding in of three different people three different lived lives of different experiences and before just like twisting together into a single cable of thought and you are for a brief moment concerned you are going to be sucked in and trapped in this before you can feel like a tug and an almost safety line preventing you from actually connecting to this permanently and using your memories of the history you can begin to describe to them what happened to Krexon within the books Okay, so Graham will be telling the tale of how he became a, you know, a prominent threat over a long, long time, and then the uh, formation of the Crossblades after the founding members took him down. The cable of thought that you've been connecting to that has all three of their memories merged together, all three of their minds, uh, you can feel a sensation along it that you believe to be an almost like an untensing muscle as if it's nice. relaxing. And you believe that you have been able to connect with the singularity and provide a reassurance to them that would give them a bit more leeway. Okay, with that, Graham is going to try to knock on the door of the memory they've been repressing again. As you go ahead, give me, everybody can give me a wisdom check. Jesus. <laughs> okay. The dice really just don't want you to tell us your story, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> you are attempting to fit into it. However, there's still a barrier. You think it's less, though. You, before it was sealed off completely... But now it's lesser, and you can kind of see a dim image of, you suspect, a bridge. Uh, you can kind of hear some shouting and maybe the sounds of storm coming from within. But you're not able to push in fully. Um, but you've weakened it by connecting to them and giving them information that would help to relieve their anxiety about this. Um Ram is going to try another Hail Mary towards the, the Lich in the Collective by just kind of vibing with how he feels about Eidos and, like, the restful, comfortable death that everybody is entitled to and respect for that. And just spooky but happy Necromancer survives. Okay. Give me a uh, wisdom check as you attempt to connect in with that. Nice. Okay. Graham, you are able to forward or backward, as it were, into a separate memory. You can see an old, old man, Sandro. He's got 
wrinkles across his face. His hair is long and white, a long white beard. Uh, and you see him kind of just sitting among a circle. Archaic and arcane runes spread out, kind of just having been carved into the ground. Uh, you can see that they are tiny little script kind of etched into the ground in an incredibly complex pattern spreading out. Uh, you can see a number of different arcanic devices have been placed around. And Sandra was chanting uh, a spell. He is hoarse in his voice. Uh, he is dripping with sweat. And he is just finishes chanting and a burst of arcanic energy erupts from it and after just a moment you can see he is changed his hair is beginning to fall from his head and his skin looks pale uh, you can see a number of arcane tattoos have been placed upon it a number of kind of you suspect maybe inks or metals have been etched into the skin and implanted in make a religion check i will you are very confident that sandro has just completed his ascension to lichdom and has just finished actually becoming a lich and you have just witnessed the immediate just force from mortal to immortal nice a newly lichd Sandro kind of stands and he kind of looks at himself and he looks in a mirror and he just starts like trying to look at his eyes, investigate himself, see if he's actually achieved his goal. And he just kind of sits in a chair. <laughs> Did you see that? Decades of work, finally realized. Is he uh, talking to himself or to us? Kind of in general, just out loud. Okay. Graham will withhold congratulating him just yet, then. <laughs> well, looks like I won't be shuffling from this mortal coil anytime soon. <sighs> Good, so much more work to get done. <laughs> I got I got a scamper, guys. All right. All right. Farewell. All right. Bye, Jeremy. Jason. God, I hate that guy. <laughs> Good old Jeremy. Good old Jeremy. What a guy. How I hate him. <laughs> Destroy him. But yes, you uh, you are within the memory of Sandro's ascension to Lichdom. You have seen it occur. He is kind of speaking out loud. You don't really see anybody else in the room. As this appears to be a more private affair. Alright. Uh, Graham's gonna let him cook. He is mostly just... It's weird. Uh, as a lich, he shouldn't really feel tired, but he looks tired. He rests for a moment. And then a moment longer, and he kind of stands, and he goes to his side of the room and begins kind of collecting papers. He's looking through and making notes and writing down his observations before kind of like shuffling them all together into a book. And he just kind of like claps his journal shut and puts it into a bag of holding. And he looks to you all. Hmm. It's funny, I don't remember there being other people here. Well, that's because there weren't. Congratulations, by the way. Ah. You're in, you've uh, put yourself into a hive mind, and we're trying to get in contact with you about one of your old projects that uh, might be the end of us. Yes, I do recall that occurring, to an extent. I will admit the flood of memories was a bit more than I expected. The others are allowing me a bit of space to speak with you. 
Well, nice to meet you in person. My name's Graham. Sandro the Lich. He kind of does a short bow. Graham returns politely. I'll admit, I'm not strictly familiar with what's going on currently. Uh, things have been a bit of a haze as of late. Uh, we have suffered some rather unfortunate side effects, I think, from something we've been engaging in. I'm not exactly sure what that would be, though. Well, that's kind of what brings us here. Um, I'm tethered to you through a limiter, so it's keeping me from fully joining the hive mind, but uh, if I may, Graham will try to memory up their situation and slideshow it to him. Sandro does his wisdom check. Yes, that does make sense. By the way, you may want to hurry up. The limiter has a set time limit before it actually overheats and explodes. Ah. Once that does, you will be forcibly merged in with us. Yeah, let's uh, let's hustle then. I created one before. It was um, it lasted a couple hours. Uh, research had allowed us to create a new one. Uh, I had never been tested before. I suspect you could probably get to maybe twenty four hours of time before it finally collapsed in on itself. Ideally, they'll be able to warn us from outside the connection, but uh, let's not chance that. I don't uh, think they're aware. In fact, uh, as far as they sh anybody should be concerned, the limiter would last forever. But... Well, shit. So, uh, we're dying from that sonic weapon you developed, as it happens. That does sound familiar to me, yes. Um, it was a small pet project we had been working on for some time. Uh, we had kind of been going here or there for it. Uh, we had found a major breakthrough at one point um, that led us to consult with the Emperor's pet uh, wizard, uh, Kraxon, that yielded some unfortunate results. Yeah, I, uh, we saw that memory, and I get the feeling that uh, he set that up on purpose to go however it did. I don't I, I, I'm not trying to remember. I very clearly have been attempting to prevent myself from remembering. Uh, the others are certainly restricting it themselves. I won't try to force it on you, but uh, if it can save our lives, then we need to know everything you can give us. I have a uh, certain suspect as we've been merged together and the memories have collapsed together. We may have certain ideas... Uh, one thing I can suggest is perhaps by going back to earlier memories and either altering what occurred within them or mm. outright deleting them if possible, you may be able to reduce some of our resistance for the simple fact we won't remember why we don't want to go into it. Well, uh, that's a good thought, and I'm sorry in advance for re-traumatizing you. I suppose... It is a end result of our effects against you. Uh, the sonic weapon was obviously deployed prematurely and was not supposed to be used at all. So if it is what is required for saving your lives and the lives of the innocents above, it is an unfortunate side effect. Oh, that's very mature of you. Thank you. Uh... Well, I've had... 600 years to think about it as we've been in the singularity to that long so nice horrifying but nice yes well it's actually not too bad um my friends and i have been able to become closer than we'd ever anticipated uh hmm. it has been almost soothing within uh or it would be uh first and only of, as far as I'm aware of it's occurring. It may have been better to not merge with some people who had survived uh, attacks by the Guardian above that had caused trouble. I suspect... <laughs> yes, yes indeed. <laughs> Apologies. Um... 
Well, I don't know if it's any uh, balm on that, but if you haven't seen that, our memory, he's been dealt with as well, thus bringing us to you. It's good that he's gone. The issue simply is... Yes. I, I, I can't even warn you what you're about to enter, because I forcing myself not to know everyone they, we are forcing ourselves not to know you may need to go back to earlier memories uh to areas where we had suffered some measure of trauma and then do your best to reduce that or eliminate it completely which may make us more resist to opening up uh, this is not a conscious effect either this is completely within our subconscious which is why we cannot assist you in it understood um well, you don't remember what you don't remember. So I think for starters, let's Graham is going to start trying to think about how they got spooked by the guardian god. Okay. Go ahead and make your wisdom check. 13. 13. Uh... And maybe the others can help as well. Also, I will be right back. No, I rolled against as you attempted to push into other memories. You were able to get high enough. Yay. Hold that thought, then. Okay. And what is everybody else doing while while Graham was discussing this? I just, well, what is the uh, situation I just got back? Oh. I had to take a step away. Um, Graham had been able to find contact with Sandro and discuss the um, the trauma they had suffered that is preventing you from accessing the memory. Oh, okay, and so we're just trying to uh, revisit the trauma, I guess. Yep. Okay. And he had asked that you, or he said that if you were to, um, like either soften the memory or get rid of it entirely, it would probably help to get into where he want to go, because it's being subconsciously suppressed. Mm. Okay, and uh, his role was for uh, connecting to their um, issues with the guardian god. Yeah. So. Okay. Do, 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 and, like, you find yourself anything, yeah. back in a tunnel, the tunnels you had just entered into uh, a few hours ago, and you can see that the three researchers as well as a number of their associates have armed themselves they are dressed in armor the kind of uh, scales and uh, carapace that had been grown they are prepared with weapons uh, you can see they have a number of scrolls and vials upon them flowing out of a vent is the guardian god uh, the giant black goo shape that kind of like flows out this jet black light eating uh, form and you can see it flow over a number of the researchers as they kind of like scream as it dissolves and absorbs them and a number of like the vials are thrown the weapons are used spells are cast on this and it just completely shrugs off the entirety of what it is experiencing. And you can see it like flow towards them. Misa gets caught in it. And Sandro is able to grab onto her hand and pull her out. Uh, her lower body is burned from exposure to the guardian god. And they begin to just run. They just route from this fight and they begin to run back uh, towards their labs as the uh, screams of their colleagues are just echoing down the hall. Uh, this is the Guardian God, you said, right? Yep. Graham is going to try to forcefully intrude a memory of him giving it a big fucking whack. Just like hitting it and just belting it off of someone. Okay. Uh, Graham, go ahead and give me the kind of wisdom check to attempt to uh, insert that memory in. Damn it! <laughs> I mean, you can, can all... I get advantage because we actually did fight it to the death? Uh, yes, you you can do advantage because you did actually do this, and <laughs> relatively recently. And everybody else can do as well, because you've all Please engaged. Please do. <laughs> Thank you, Otto. Uh, <laughs> Otto Christ. is able to force 
a memory and so this memory you, you begin to bleed in your memories and where the guardian god is this gigantic much bigger than you remember bleeding in the memory you can see the guardian god resort to its true size and you have the memory of slicing into it using your spells cutting in using the divine smites the gunshots and you can see the guardian god being forced back and becoming smaller and cut apart and having a difficult time maintaining its shape uh graham's going to try to continue the cherry tap of healing from mental trauma by spending a real spell slot on healing uh what's her name misa of her acid burns okay as you enter in the spell slot um go ahead just give me the heal just to just to do it Oops. i almost clicked inflict wounds <laughs> that would have been kind of productive misa's uh, eyes dissolve in her head as she dies with see, a memory that didn't actually happen good uh i actually don't have cure wounds so it'll be a healing word okay but it's a really good healing word <laughs> Uh, you see Misa's wounds begin to heal. Uh, the acid burns f go away. Uh, she seems less horrified by it. Um, the screams lessen. And you see them kind of waiting at the door for their remaining colleagues to rejoin them again. Either that or the guardian god. They're just kind of waiting to see who uh, who survives. Uh, Graham is going to replay the memory of the do the god's death. Okay. Oh, actually, no. Graham is literally the only person who can't do that because I got knocked unconscious, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, so somebody else will have to take over. Okay, so Fern or Otto, you can go ahead and attempt to fuse that memory in. Oh, okay. can, uh -oh. can I get the, the Jeremy thing? You know I will say here? yes because, yeah. <laughs> the dice really just don't want you to give us the story. <laughs> but hell. with that, uh, you are able to force in a memory. So they see their memory shift and change as the guardian god is killed here. And you see the, like the death as the, the slime just erupts and ruptures apart and breaks down and dissolves within the acid and the memory of the acid disappearing and flowing down until there's none left nice. and you can see the kind of remaining colleagues of the three come together and kind of limp their way to the actual tunnel entrance and exit and the worry on their face kind of dissolves and a weary happiness of being able to, at least as far as they remember, defeat the Guardian God it enters in. Hooray! My dog keeps poking me, so I'm a little... You must destroy him. So with that, you are able to eventually disperse with this memory and allow it to progress through. Um, give me an insight check, if you would. I will. Nope. Okay, well, uh, you can have the happened. fifth one. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. You get a profound sense from the remaining memories um, as you've connected to the sea of, um, of memories and emotions and thought. And where it was a maelstrom before, it is reducing. It doesn't feel as a strong. Um, it feels calmer, and you're connected to it a lot easier. Okay. Um, I guess we can try to broach the memory again, but if it's too soon, we might need to try to go after memories of uh, what might have been the death of Zaf Feller, like the alarm going off. Uh, which would you like to do? Um, let's look for another traumatic memory, I guess. Um, see if we can alter that in any way. Oh, okay. Um, okay, maybe a simple one. Here's, here's my suggestion. Um, presumably after the alarm was done and they, the people who survived got out, they would take a head count. Graham is going to add the party to the head count, so it seems like five more people survived, or four more people survived. Okay. Uh, give me a, either of you three can give me a deception check. 
to attempt to force that kind of fake memory within. I have a plus one. Does anybody have better? I'll try. I have a five. Nice. Okay. Yeah, Otto, you're able to insert yourselves within the memory. So they're kind of like doing the count of their colleagues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He looks to you. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen. All right, everyone's here. Good. I thought we'd lost some more, but no, it looks like we got lucky. I reckon so. Everybody okay? Uh, for the most part. I mean, some burns here or there. Uh, you know, I thought that was going to be a bit tougher, but... There was a lot of chaos. I barely saw what happened. Yeah, it was wild. I thought we were... Uh, I was conf confident at first, but when it just got us with the first wave, I thought we were going to have to go with plan B, the actual merger, but no, I guess we're we're good to go. I think. Hmm. No, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, let's keep going forward. Uh, no, I'm sure it's fine. No, we're good. Yes, everyone, let's let's head down. We're 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 okay. We can uh, continue on. And the memory kind of fades away as it gets a bit hazy. And you find yourselves floating above the uh, this kind of giant watery orb of memories again. As you have caused a slight bit of a uh, mental disconnect. As the memories don't quite align properly. But you're pretty confident that you're able to successfully achieve your goal. Uh, at least in this one specific case. Hooray. Yeah. Uh, let's see if some of those memories have been loosened up on, unless I'm th missing a third source of trauma that I can't remember. If you'd like to, you can attempt to get to the, the kind of memory that had been blocked to you. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's all try our best. Wisdom again? Yep, go ahead. Okay, not terrible. Yeah, and if everybody else, you could... Uh, uh, Otto can oh, attempt okay. a wisdom as well to attempt in. As you attempt to get into that memory, you see you're still a bit blocked from it. And it skips you through, and as you attempt to pass in, and you can see more of this area, but it's definitely a lot hazy. Uh, it's still pretty hazy, and you're not able to enter into it entirely. Uh, but you find yourself even earlier than the fight with the Guardian God, as you can see a still human Sandro, a... Uh, Misa and Silric, and they are presenting a kind of black pudding substance within this uh, glass container, and they're showing it to some colleagues. They're like, we believe that this is going to really assist you in your research uh, with the acid labs above. As you can see, we've trapped it within. Uh, it is a mixture of a black pudding with a creature that can eat memories. Um, so be careful with it. Uh, so it is our gift to you. Please make use of the research, and I hope that it will be uh, beneficial to you in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains some things. Just be careful. It is somewhat... It's not intelligent, but it does have an animal instinct. It will attempt to escape containment. So just follow all containment protocols, and there won't be any trouble. <laughs> Narrator. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ram will bear it in mind. And... Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, Graham is going to try to see if they had any conversations with the people on the upper level about the sonic weapon. Okay. As like a, a security protocol against the thing if it did get out. Uh, make a wisdom check to try and find that. There we go. Um, you cycle through, but you're not able to find any memory. They don't appear to mention the uh, sonic weapon to anybody on the upper floor. Uh, as far as they're aware, it there doesn't seem to have been that conversation. You're pretty confident in that fact. 
then uh, Graham is going to try to find a conversation where they are talking about deploying it against the uh, Black Ooze. Okay. So now that we know it was like a Black Ooze hybrid, that might help unlock more memories. Yep. Kind of reminds me of a Morrowind dialogue chain where you have to <laughs> like say the right keyword to unlock the next step of the discussion. I wanted to be a little more kind of puzzly as you attempted to figure out the, the, the chain. Yeah, it's neat. And, you uh, never break the chain. Yes. You enter into another memory as they are discussing the sonic weapon. Uh, you see yourselves actually within the the lab itself. Uh, you can see they have set it up. And Misa is strapped into the table. Uh, you see uh, Sandro as a lich and you see Silric. They're beginning to attach the, the electrodes to their heads and they're discussing like once we're in we won't be able to physically interact with everybody we do have the backup if things really go south if the final assault happens it can be deployed if anybody we can discuss with them uh, and think of a cure uh, it's possible that they could reference the... Never mind. Let's begin the merger. Uh, reference the what before you go under? Oh, um, uh, the research material that might have uh, a cure. Uh, I can't remember. I, I, I don't want to remember what we did with it. Um, it's to deal with that damn Krexen, the fucking snake. Don't worry. He's going to get his. You look at me, and you look at the surety in my eyes. And Graham attempts to radiate. Yeah, we got that fucker. Yeah, give me a uh, give me a persuasion uh, with advantage, as you've already previously inserted a memory of this. Nice. I believe you. I trust you. I... I, I didn't really want to... We didn't really want to deal with this, the three of us. We had made some mistakes uh, and it wasn't quite something we were able to control to the best of our ability. We met with his so-called colleague who caused us a lot of problems. And I suppose if we had just never engaged in his research, we wouldn't have ended up in this problem. Where where did you meet that colleague? I think you should go and see it for yourself. It's difficult to explain. Okay, Graham will try to go and see it for ourselves. Okay, give me a, another wisdom check as you attempt to access the memory. Come on, man! <laughs> oh no! At I least mean, it wasn't a one. Wait, auto. That have been better. That's just as bad. No, I'm going to give you advantage just because it's important. We have been, like, slowly massaging ourselves yeah. into their running stream of conscious. Okay, that's a little better. Okay. Yeah, you, you've you done enough to actually pierce in. So, you enter in, and you find the memory of the three of them together with Krexon as they attempt to enter in. And you find yourselves in a rather familiar setting where you had initially done battle with the Tanner... Oh. And you find yourselves yeah. across the bridge, but you can see like the kind of strange, hazy, uh, dreamlike state of this memory. And you can see that kind of giant creature below as it like rubs against the uh, the stone, causing the kind of like horrifying sounds that uh, you hear. And you see the three of them in shocked horror as Krexon comfortably displays his latest uh, magical arcane symbols and shows the library and the uh, the book that he written it in. Like, you three seem a little upset. And here I was showing you, my colleague, really, if anything, you should feel rather, I suppose, happy, somewhat an honor to see 
my colleague, the flayed one. And I think we'll end it here and pick this up next week. Nice.